Former Victorian Liberal President Michael Kroger has just spent the last week in Israel and, unlike a certain foreign minister, he actually visited the October 7th massacre sites, the hostage sites and much more. Something our foreign minister should have done but didn't. Michael joins us now. Michael Kroger, welcome back. Uh, Happy New Year. Happy Australia Day. And you? <laughs> Great to see and you. you. And uh, tell us about Israel. Well, it was the best of times and worst of times, Rowan. Uh, the stoicism and firmness and unity of the Jewish people uh, to stick together, uh, given what happened on October 7, is uh, wonderful to see. On the other hand, visiting those sites, um, I went down to the Nova Music Festival site in Riem, which is sort of halfway down. Uh, I went to Kibbutz um, uh, Oz, which is sort of facing Khan Yunus, um, and um, Kafar Azar, which is another Kibbutz in, in the north um, of the Gaza area, on the Israeli side, obviously. And those three hot sites were shockingly hit, mate. I also saw the uh, 47 minute uh, uh, IDF video that the Israeli army have put together. Yeah. Um, and I know many people in the media have seen it. Um, it's an extraordinary piece of work. It's taken from the head cameras of the Hamas fighters in many respects. Uh, they're mobile phones, uh, security cameras. Uh, and there are some shocking scenes I'll, I'll actually never get out of my head, um, particularly the one where the woman's a woman Palestinian savage is just saying Allah Akbar as uh, she's encouraging uh, people just to shoot uh, Jews uh, at, at the music festival and, uh, and and other places, and she's just saying Allah Akbar, isn't this fantastic? And the and the joy in the faces of these Palestinian savages uh, as they were killing these innocent Jews is just frightening, mate. It was frightening to see, and it was frightening to be at these places and. You know, it's one. Some of these sites are one 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 kilometre um, from the kibbutz. You've got the kibbutz. You've got farmland. You've got a couple of insipid uh, wire fences, and then you've got the Palestinian town in Gaza, uh, which is why it was so easy, mate, for them to come across the border when they wanted to, and um, slaughter these innocent men, women, women, and, and children. James, uh, this is footage. Of, this is footage of. Um, um, kibbutz near Oz, um, which is just near, uh, that's facing um, a town, um, um, Kuza, and just behind that is is um, is Khan Yunus. So that's down in the south. But that um, there was shocking damage there at that kibbutz. Um, uh, f f uh, Sixty, they took sixty hostages. Uh, they slaughtered forty people. They took sixty hostages, um, and thirty of the hostages have been let go. That's at the Lebanese border. Um, it's two kilometres from a kibbutz there. That zigzag line, Rowan, is a is a is a um, concrete fence, and over the top of that hill, that's the Lebanese border. Uh, that's uh, that's at Elon. Looking at Adamit. Adamit is on the the town on the top there. Um, so uh, many people watching will know these towns better than me, which is why I've got to get the pronunciation right. But. Um, no, the stoicism of the Jewish people has been and was extraordinary to be there last week. And um, I bought for my friend Shari Markson, who's been wonderful, reporting wonderfully from Hostage Square on Thursday. I bought her this, which is a Bring Them Home uh, T-shirt, which I'm going to send to Shari. And I also <laughs> bought her um, this, which is worn by many people, just uh, Bring Them Home, which is a message to Hamas. Please let the 136 hostages you still got um, um, go. Uh, James, and, uh, of course, Rowan. This whole wall. Sorry, sorry, Mike. Yep. Oh, look, I was just going to say, um, Michael, you said that the pol politics of Israel right now are very united, obviously, and stoic about what's happened. What is the uh, general feeling in Israel about the wider conflict uh, that now seems to be developing involving Iran, the Houthis? And is there any discontent with the way the United States has handled its relationship with Iran, i.e. that over the last several years, you know, under Biden and Obama before him, they have encouraged the Iranian regime and essentially empowered um, Hamas by their offices. Very complex question. The Israelis give the Americans a lot of credit for warning Iran uh, to stop Hezbollah invading uh, the northern parts of Israel. They think the Americans warning to Iran stopped Hezbollah invading. 
Um, but uh, look, all roads lead to Iran, don't they? I mean, uh, I Iran, Hezbollah, Iran, Hamas, Iran, the Houthis, um, Iran have got senior officials in Syria, in Lebanon. All roads lead back to, Ila uh, to Iran. Until such time, James, as the Western world uh, takes stock of Iran and deals with Iran, you're not going to have peace in the Middle East because you have effectively a Cold War going on between Iran and the Saudis. Uh, most countries, by the way, most of the Arab countries in the, in, 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 um, in the Middle East are opposed to Iran. Until mm. the West and the world deals with Iran, there will be no peace in the Middle East, two-state solution or not. Absolutely. Uh, thanks, Michael Kroger. And uh, on that note, Australia has shamed itself by not being able to send uh, any, any worthwhile military equipment right. over there. Sure. Uh, Michael Kroger, welcome back to Australia and happy Australia Day.